Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be taking items I've thrifted, mostly from the Goodwill bins, because if you watch my Julie Thrifts channel, you know that I love going shopping at the Goodwill bin. So I'm gonna take these items that I found and I'm going to upcycle them to more my style. I think you're gonna enjoy the projects on today's video. Let's go ahead and get started. I found these at the Goodwill bins. I think they possibly came from some kind of ice cream machine, but I am not positive. I just absolutely loved the look of them and I figured we could turn them into a cool, unique canister set. I have a lot of little transfer extras, so I just went through my stash to see what would look best. I still have a set of these beautiful birds from the Brocon transfer. I think that might look great on there. I think the pink looks really good with the silver, but so does the yellow. And I really like the size of this one on the canister set. So I think I'm gonna go with this and I think I'm gonna go with the birds. When using a transfer, you're gonna have this white part on the back. You wanna peel that off. And then you wanna make sure that you have it where you want your transfer to be before you put it down because sometimes it automatically starts sticking to your surface. And I like to use painter's tape just to make sure everything stays in place. And all of your transfers come with this transfer tool and you're gonna take it and you're just going to rub it over your transfer and it'll start to adhere to your surface. The transfer is sticking very well to the surface. I hardly even had to rub, but look, this is why I like to tape it down and slowly pull it up because that piece did not stick. So you just put it back down, you rub over it again, and then there you go. So make sure you always slowly pull it up. That way, if that happens, you can just put it back down and go over it again. Look how good that looks on this canister. For the birds, I'm gonna do the exact same thing. I'm gonna find my placement and then I'm going to put it down. This transfer is from the Brocant, one of my favorite transfer books. And this one is from the Ephemeral Melange transfer book. It has all these beautiful, smaller little labels and I just love that one. So same thing, I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna start on one end, one end and I'm going to rub it. And you can already see that it is starting to transfer. It starts to change colors when it attaches to the surface. And I find the quickest way to do a transfer is to slowly pull up and kind of rub at the same time. And I feel like that just makes the process go a lot quicker. Transfer stuck so good to this metal canister. It took no time at all for them to come off. Now this next step is total personal preference. I like to distress my transfers a little bit. I just find it feels like you know, the transfer has always been on this piece if you just kind of rough it up a little bit and let a little bit of the background come through. So I just have my sanding block and I am just very, very lightly sanding this and it's just a subtle difference. But to me, design is all in the details and so I really like the way that it looks if you just subtly and carefully sand your transfers. Now that the canisters are done, we need to work on the top. So this is what the top looks like. It does have a hole. So I went to my stash, I always pick up little wood knobs when I find them. And I'm going to add that to the top of this. Now it does come with a screw. However, it would just, you know, go through the middle. So I just cut out this wooden block and I'm gonna add my screw to it. And then I'm going to put the knob on top and then we're gonna pick out a paint color and paint the entire top. These are not gonna be sewed as a set, but I'm thinking Fusion in the color Paisley is going to look absolutely amazing with both of the transfers, and I think it looks great with the silver age patina of the canister. I'm using the number 14 pointed sash paintbrush. Y'all know the pointed sash paintbrushes are my favorite. And it should just take one coat of paint on here. I might have a few touch-ups, we'll see. I'll put one coat of paint on and 
see if it needs more, but Fusion Paint definitely has the most amazing coverage and it has a built-in sealer. So I will not have to seal this once it's painted. It is good to go. And of course, all of the paint products, transfers, everything you can find on my website, juliesdesignsandsigns.com. It looks really good, but I feel like this looks too new in contrast to the aged canister. So I'm going to take the Fusion Antiquing Wax and I'm going to apply it to my paint. So you're just going to brush it on your entire piece and then you're going to take a dry paper towel and just kind of wipe it back and this will give it a more aged look. So you can kind of see the difference between this one where I apply the antiquing wax and then this one that has the fresh paint and you can, you know, wipe it back or add more layers if you want to. I think one coat of this will be perfect and give it just a more aged look that is going to go better with this piece. I would like to take a minute to tell y'all about the sponsor of today's video, June's Journey. If you have not played June's Journey before, I'm going to tell you a little bit about it. It is a mystery game set in the 1920s and you go through all of these beautiful rooms and beautiful scenes and you find all of these clues. So it takes two things that I really enjoy, a good murder mystery and also going through and finding hidden picture objects. I think y'all would enjoy this game. I find it very relaxing and it is free to download. So y'all make sure to go to my description and click the link to try out June's journey. I can't remember where I purchased this basket, but I got it because it has the ceramic tile attached to the basket. So I figured it'd be a great little piece to upcycle. I want to add clay to the top of the tile. So I have my IOD air dry clay and I'm just kind of rolling it out to a size that is bigger than the ceramic tile. And then I'm going to use my antiquity stamp. This is one of the newer stamps from IOD. I'm going to be using this one. It is very similar to the crockery stamp. So if you have the crockery stamp, you could use that as well. So I'm just going to put it on top of my clay and then I'm going to push it in. So not only can you use your stamps to stamp stuff with ink, but you can also use them to make impressions in your clay. So just push it in and then you pull it off and then look how amazing that looks. I put the clay on the tile and just rubbed along the edges. That way I could see where it ends. Now I'm going to use some Gorilla Glue and I'm going to apply some glue to the ceramic tile. Then I'm going to put it back. Oh, that's upside down. <laughs> put it back the right way and get it in place. And then I'm going to come in with an X-Acto knife and I'm just going to cut off all of the excess. I trimmed off all of the excess and now I'm just going around and kind of flattening my um, clay on the sides and just kind of pushing it over and making sure that all of the colors on the tile are covered up with clay. It's already looking really, really great. I am loving how this has turned out. My original plan was actually to paint this, but I am loving so much how the white clay is looking with the basket that I think I'm going to leave it natural. However, I do want you to be able to see the details a little bit more. So I'm going to take the Fusion, Fusion Antiquing Glaze and I'm going to put it in all of the spots that have the details. And then I'm going to come in with a baby wipe and just wipe off all the excess. I want to try to keep the clay as white as possible, but I want that antiquing glaze to be in all of the details. And of course, where it's deeper, it'll be darker and where it's a little bit closer, it'll be, you know, a little more white, but I love the vintage look of this. I 
found these two beautiful watercolors from the Goodwill bins. And I also have this basket and I have this frame from a previous project that I did over the winter. So I was gonna try to make all of these pieces work together. I did cut this one down and I backed it with some cardboard to make it a little bit thicker. And look how great this looks when I put it in this basket. The, the basket acts pretty much as a frame and I feel like the colors go so well together. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little bit of hot glue and put some beads of hot glue on the back of my cardboard and then I'm going to attach it to the basket and this will become a beautiful piece of art so you'll be able to hang it on the wall or you could have it as a shelf sitter as well. For the other picture, I'm gonna paint both the mat and the frame in Fusion's Algonquin color. It is a very beautiful kind of brownish color. I think it's gonna pair really nicely with the basket because I do want these two pieces to look like a set, even though they are gonna be different just because you know the watercolors are the same. So I think this is going to be the perfect color. So I'm just gonna, it should just take one coat of paint gonna put one coat of paint both on the mat and the picture frame. The paint is all dry but I do want to distress it because I think that's gonna look a little bit better next to the basket to let a little bit of that wood tone show through. Now the fusion paint does have a built-in sealer with it but you can distress it after it dries with some sandpaper. I always keep really cool metal pieces. I actually have a whole drawer labeled random metal pieces. And then I also got this box from the Goodwill bins. I think this little handle on here will look so cute. But first, we definitely need to paint this orange toned box. I think Fusion Milk Paint in the color Stockholm Green is going to be the perfect choice. I love this color. If you have not used milk paint before, it comes in a powder form and you mix half paint with half water and then you just stir it up. My paint is all mixed up and you just paint your piece like you would with any other paint. And usually with milk paint, when I want full coverage, um, it takes about two coats of paint. But as you can see, the coverage is really good and this is a beautiful color. It also paints really, really quickly. My first coat of paint is on there and it is looking really good. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put on my second coat of paint. When I apply the second coat of paint, I like to dry it with my heat gun. And what that does is it really forces that milk paint to trip and crack. And when you're using milk paint, that is exactly the look that you're going for. Now that the second coat is dry, I want to take some sandpaper and just lightly sand the entire piece. And you'll see, look, look at all that crackle that is starting to chip off. This is why I love and use milk paint. I'm gonna leave a link to this little sander in the description because it is such a handy tool to have at your craft table. This box is too thin to put screws in here. So to attach my hardware, I'm gonna do a combination of Gorilla Glue and hot glue. The Gorilla Glue will permanently keep it in place and then the hot glue will temporarily keep it in place while the Gorilla Glue dries. All right, guys, that is the end of today's video. I truly hope that inspired y'all to go find your own thrifted finds and turn them into very unique pieces of home decor. Y'all leave a comment below and let me know what's your favorite project that I created in today's video. And I will be back again next week for a new DIY thrift flip video. Y'all have a great day and I will see y'all next week.